Good day everyone, Garage King here, and on today's episode, uh, we are going to do an oil change on my Vanagon. It's time uh, to do one, it needs one, and if you don't have a Vanagon, hey, and if you just want to see how an oil change is done on a Vanagon, stay tuned because uh, this one's kind of a kind of a cool one, and then we'll start it up, make sure it's got oil pressure, and uh, yeah, let's just go through all the steps. All right, there we go. So those of you that own a Vanagon know that the engine is in the back. Those that don't own a Vanagon, now you know where the engine is. It's in the back. So if you go looking in the front, you're never going to find it. So how do we get to the engine? Well, first things first, what we got to do is we got to undo this cushion. Well, I shouldn't say undo. We got to just take it off. And by the way, these are the original cushions from my 86. So they're still in great shape. So VW did a really good job on quality. I'll tell you that much. Anyway, now once the cushion is undone, you're going to have two little locks. So you're just going to turn them counterclockwise. There's one. Let's go over here and do the other one. Here we go, just like that. And you're going to remove the engine cover. So, so cool, guys. So cool. I just, uh, I, I love these vans. Anyway, here is a shot of the engine. So you can see here's what the engine looks like. You can actually see the road underneath. So they're actually quite simple to work on. There's the oil filler tube, power steering, dipstick. It's all there. So, and there's another shot of the dipstick in case you didn't see it. Now, how do we fill it up? Some people ask, you just pull the license plate down and there is your oil tube there and it's gonna expand when it comes time to change the actual oil. So let's pan underneath and we can actually see this one. I didn't even have to pull it into the garage. I can just do it in my driveway because the nice thing about these vehicles is the ground clearance is really, really good. So you can actually just crawl right underneath them. I'm gonna try to get you a better uh, angle here. Let's see if I can move the camera around just a wee bit. Uh, there we go. We're almost there. We're moving around. There's the oil filter. You can see you can get to it very, very easily. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the drain plug. I do have a drain pan underneath it. Now the factory, I'm not even sure what type of wrench you're going to use. This one was a 14 or a 13, but these vehicles are so old people have replaced drain plugs. So you're just going to have to see what size is underneath your Vanagon. And actually I had to rethread mine because whoever owned the van before uh, me, actually stripped it out and I put another one in. So the threads on mine are metric uh, 1.5 times 14, but I don't think those are the factory threads. You can see the oil's actually fairly clean, but it's been about a year and you know what? I hadn't driven it last year much at all. So I like to change the oil every year anyway. Plus it gives me an excuse to crawl underneath it and just make sure everything is okay. And the other thing is I wanted to do a video on it. So I figured why not? So we're just gonna change the oil. Now in order to make my Vanagon faster, I'm gonna replace the drain plug with this uh, lightweight aluminum machined one and it's actually got a magnet on the end so that's a good thing <laughs> just kidding it's not going to make it any faster but it'll let me monitor maybe uh, you know if uh, something's going on inside the engine and you know what that brings up a really good point these uh, drain plugs that actually have the magnets on them they are you know really good because if you do your oil change on your own and you know uh, how much, um, I guess, metal shavings and stuff like that should be on your drain plug every time. If all of a sudden you happen to do an oil change and then you find there's a whole bunch, then well, your engine may be eating itself up from the inside or there may be something going on. So they are a good way to monitor your engine. So they're, they're a good idea. Now I use a Manfilter 71912 on mine, the W71912. That's uh, what I use on my Vatagon. These are German made filters, so they're actually Pretty good quality. If you open them up, they're fairly heavy and they uh, they look good. The anti-drain back valve is really good. And if you go on a lot of the forums, you'll find that uh, a lot of people recommend to use a man filter. So those are the ones that I use. Let's install it. Okay, so we're back under the vehicle and normally I use one of these clamping tools to get the oil filters off on um, most vehicles. They work great. But on this case uh, or on this vehicle, I have to use these type of pliers and I have to use these type of pliers just because it's too tight underneath here. I have a sandwich adapter. You can see it's right underneath the oil filter. And what that sandwich adapter allows me to do is this way I can monitor my oil pressure, which is very, very important if you own a Vanagon. And it also lets me monitor my oil temperature. So that's why I'm using the pliers. how it looks underneath. So that's a good shot of it underneath. So we're just gonna give that a wipe up. We're gonna lubricate the filter and spin it on. Oh, 
Sorry I had to cut that song off, but you know what? I find some YouTubers just make videos way too long and I like to get to the point. So anyway, it's time to fill it up. So let's fill this sucker up. Now you'll notice the oil that I'm using is uh, 5W50 synthetic oil. I find it works pretty good, especially in hot climates. Uh, summertime, you know, where I live, it's pretty hot. I've also used 540, 040. I've used different grades. I'd be curious to see what you guys use. So if you want to share that with me, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know your experiences. I'd be, uh, I'd be curious to know. Now, once you put some oil in here, you, you got to put, uh, you know, usually around three and a half, four liters, you're going to start it up. And then what I do is once I get oil pressure, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to recheck it. You know, you wait a few seconds to recheck it. You can see here we have no oil pressure for a while. And the reason is I did not prime the filter. So there you go. We just got oil pressure. So that's great. Now we'll shut it off, wait for a few seconds and then top it up. Anyway, I could have been longer, but don't want to. Hope to see you next week. Thanks everyone.